Welcome to the Dakota Housing Network. I am Greg Larson here with Dave Floor and our very special friend and uh, expert on all things house care wise, Mike Wilson from Ace Inspections. Welcome Thank back, Mike. Thanks for having hey, me. Hey, Mike. We have Mike here every uh, so often. So quarterly. That, uh, we, quarterly. Kind of quarterly, don't it's we? It's quarterly. I think it's is kind it? of in quarterly. It is now. Let's go with it's quarterly. We're going to do quarterly. it quarterly. Okay. <laughs> to talk about uh, Executive home. decision has been made. There you go. And we're going to talk about home care. We need to start with this one, though. Uh, happy day after birthday to John Bon Jovi. Yep. Okay. 54, that young punk. Right. So the kid we'll, from Jersey. That's the right. Jay Z. So we'll be featuring Jay Z music today. Okay. Yeah. The other guy from Jersey, yeah. First up, in 1887 today, something rather remarkable happened. What year? 1887. 1887. March 3rd, Ann Sullivan met Helen Keller. Oh, okay. And began that education, and we know all the leaps and bounds and things that meant for folks with hearing and, and uh, speaking disabilities. So, big day in that kind of history. Dave, in, interest, interest rates. rates. As always. Are we interested? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to find you're going to get the info anyway, whether you're interested or not. Okay, as always, we start out with our interest rate uh, news here. Uh, we use the uh, Freddie Mac Primary Mortgage Market Survey for the week ending today. Yes, ironically, yes, the 30-year fixed rate averaged 3.64 in the last week. Uh, that was up from last week when it averaged 3.62. Ooh. Big jump there. Yep. Be careful. 15-year average 2.94. That was up last week when it averaged 2.93. A year ago, the 15-year was at 3.03, and a year ago, the 30-year was at 3.75. So we're still better than off than we were a year ago. That's right. Are you better okay. off now than you were a year ago? Okay. And then from our friend uh, Barry Habib at the MBS Highway, big news this week is jobs reports came out. Uh, the jobless claims uh, were at, reported at 278,000. That's weaker than the expectation, so that was an, a good report. But tomorrow the jobs report comes out, and they are expecting uh, 190,000 new jobs to be created. Unemployment will stay at 4.9%. Uh, and Barry is recommending that uh, keep the simple lock by the end of the day. Uh, is probably your best bet. Okay. Because if the jobs report comes in probably at that or better, more than Good likely uh, rates will probably jump up a little bit. So go ahead and lock them in, folks. Call your loan lock officer. Down tight. Run down to your loan officer. Call them, text them, email them, whatever, and lock your rate in. Okay. If you haven't. Okay. That's that's that. Okay. So is it Trump trivia today? Could be Trump trivia. Let's do Trump trivia. And, and let's right. keep it with the the mortgage aspect of, of Mr. Trump. Did you know okay. that that Donald Trump had a mortgage business? I did. You did. Mike? Well, we talked about it before the show, so now you know. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you the answer. Okay. Well, anyway, he did. Back in 2006, in the spring of 2006, and why this is, it's almost springtime, right? Well, March 23rd, is that the first day of spring? Uh, I think you're right. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm worried about the 17th. Ooh, party time. St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Get Show your whatever on. you are, Joel. Rice and uh, uh, grease up your beer mug. Okay. Get your green on. All right. But anyway, in the spring of 2006, the tycoon hosted a glitzy event at the Trump Tower to introduce Trump Mortgage LLC, a new firm that specialized in selling residential and commercial real estate. He devoted a whole floor at the Trump Organization headquarters uh, to the new business. And his picture appeared atop the company website with the instruction, talk to my mortgage professionals now. Uh, how long do you think it took that company to go under? Don't know. 18 Mike? months. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> 18 months later, no more Trump mortgage. And, of course, he blamed it on the people he hired to run it. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, Donald Trump. He, it was a great time to start a mortgage company. Oh, he didn't foresee that one coming. Yeah. Right. Although he's lately been saying he foresaw the the uh, financial crisis. Yes. So I I don't know what he he's a little disconnected there, but anyway. So Trump tr Trump mortgage. Yeah. You win a trivia bet. Did Donald Trump ever own a mortgage company? Yes. yes. Okay. There you go. Yep. All right. Go to some bar that's got trivia. You might okay. be able to cash in on So that. what are we going to talk about else? Be, well, Mike, but... Well, yeah, most of the show is going to be with Mike uh, and, and uh, springtime with your house, what you should do. I want to just throw... And this is not a... 
we, you know, we don't endorse in this business and in this show any particular business. Yes. But folks, uh, there is this website. Uh, actually, it's a Facebook page called Ace Inspections. And you got to be real careful because if you go to Ace Property Inspections, you're going to be in Sydney, Australia. Ooh, okay. <laughs> but Ace Inspections, uh, Mike has devoted a lot of time. And what you've done is you put a bunch of problems you found on houses. I have. I have. You know, as I take my pictures and build my reports, there are some concerning areas of properties that I have found. Um, I put those in a file, and now I have put those on my, my Facebook page. And I'd like to invite you to take a look at those um, and see if there's any of those characteristics around your property and what should be done about that. Right. So, so if someone sees something uh, that could they, they don't know could be an issue with their, with their home, furnace, water systems, roofs, gutters, whatever, mm -hmm. they can run to your Facebook page and scroll through those, what is it, 90? Pictures? I've put up 90 pictures so far. There'll be more coming I, later. I, I, I and think see if they can spot it. <laughs> the, the value would be, to go, really, I think, to go through and look at them mm -hmm. and see what can happen when you don't maintain your house. And that's yes. very valuable. You know, I, say, I don't want that chimney falling in on me or the gutter or the uh, shingles, you know, peeling up. You know, so how do I prevent that from happening? Right? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. For instance, you've got your laptop open right now, Mike. I'm looking at a picture that looks like there's a flame that's quite high. Um, I'm I'm thinking that's the inside of a furnace. It is the inside of a furnace, and I'm. Uh, this is one of the pictures that I've taken. Uh, anytime that you have your furnace running and you look inside and you're looking at the actual flame itself, and you notice that there's a higher percentage of of yellow tips in that furnace, that is a sign that it is creating a higher level of con uh, uh, carbon monoxide. And that mm. would be a cautionary thing, especially if you have an older furnace. Yep, see the R. There you are. Now we're going to a break right away, which is amazing. It went so fast. I just got to tell you guys quickly, I have a new respect for Finland. Oh, okay. I have, you know, I look up this day and yeah. whatever. Well, you're a and, trivia guy. Yeah. So yeah. I'm reading this and then. <laughs> I'm seeing in March 3rd of 1945. Now, isn't World War II about over? It's yep. like within months of ending. Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Finland declared war on Germany. Oh. <laughs> because. Oh, boy, you talk about jumping the, on the yeah, bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had managed to stay out of it, but the Soviet Union was attempting to take over Finland at the end of the war when people weren't looking. And they they started advancing onto Finland and the Finns, much in guerrilla warfare style, pushed them back and then quickly declared war on Germany so they'd have a seat at the discussions and <laughs> where the borders are going to go. <laughs> so Finland okay. was, I think it was a 96 day war for them. Yeah. <laughs> Bandwagoners. Uh, but it, what, I, I have a whole new respect for them. Look what that did All for right. them. Protected right. their country. We'll be back after the break <laughs> with Mike Wilson. Currently 28. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. I believe we are back, unless I'm early. We're wanted dead or alive. Wanted dead or alive. That's what John Bon Jovi John says. John Bon Jovi. As we get rolling into this seg segment, I just want to tell you, 1971, guys, on March 3rd, the U.S. 5th Special Forces Group left Vietnam. It was the start of the U.S. departure from Vietnam. Do you know what the 5th Special Forces were better known as? Green Berets. Yes, you go. There you are. Okay. The Green Beret. Ha! All right, let's talk just I a little bit something. of statistics. Um, we've been talking about, over the last months, folks, if you've been listening about the housing market and Bismarck Mandan and what's going on, and we've been talking about that the high-priced houses have been affecting the market. And we saw... Uh, a marked decrease in the average listing price and sale price of homes, and that's just clearly because there's no uh, there's no uh, upper level houses, so it's pushing it down, really back to a more normal level and, and more in keeping. The sky so is falling. The sky is not falling. Oh, okay. What Sean Hannity say? Let not your heart be troubled. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, here's here's the statistics. Uh, this is February 2015. Compared to February of 2016, uh, numbers of units sold are up 3%. Uh, 
the average list price is up 3%, the mm -hmm. average sold price is up 3%. Mm -hmm. So we've made those adjustments. Now that's in single families. We have some issues still with condos. They are way off and it's because of financing folks. They're trying to get it fixed, but it's very hard to finance a condo right now. And so that's why those sales are off. 62% uh, uh, that will turn. The other thing is there aren't a lot of condos on the market. And so a few condos, I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, numbers of units sold. Last year they sold eight, this year they sold three in February. So, you know, one That's, unit throws yeah. it way off. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the uh, prices though on condos are up 8%. So, okay. You know, it's numbers, numbers. So okay. we have a stable market uh, in Bismarck, Mandan. As as the upper level houses uh, sell out, we have too many of those for sale right now. As those balance out, you'll see different statistics. Because right now they're really weighting everything. They're making everything look a little mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. But, you know, we're up 2% over last year. Our, our average prices and median prices are up 2%. The days on the market has really not changed much at all. Uh, down 2%, and we're still getting 90% of the proper list price. So in Bismarck, Mandan, we have a very good, healthy market. Uh, it's a, our, our first time home buyer program so far this year, we're probably up, uh, I'd say 5% from what we were expecting. Okay. So, so yeah. Yeah. Things are, and, things and are moving in. We're just moving into the market yeah. season, yeah. really. So yeah. we'll see how that works. So, Mike, back to you. What's the next thing we want to talk about? You know, we're starting to get into spring. So we're looking at spring cleaning. There are things that we want to definitely make sure that we're keeping track of. You know, when the um, snow is off now, uh, we want to make sure we're getting on the roof, checking the shingles, make sure the, those are in good shape. We have had some pretty bad windstorms here, so we want to make sure that the shingles are all intact and, and sealed. Um, if there's any nails that are popping through the shingle, you want to go ahead and push those down, put a little shingle sealant on top of that. Make sure you don't get any leaks and stuff. We also want to clean out the gutters, um, put on gutter guards if it is uh, an issue with leaves. Um, I do like those a lot, but I am also an advocate of taking those gutter guards off in the fall because what will happen is you'll get that water starting to flow off of your roof. It hits the cold soffit, starts to freeze, and then that gutter guard can actually start that freezing process to ice dam against your shingles and it can start crawling underneath your shingles so okay. that would be something yeah. you'd want to proactively take off in the fall and make sure those are good take a hose up with you run the uh not only clean out the gutters but also the downspouts if those are clogged up then you're kind of you know still in the same boats so we want to make yep. sure we're doing that yeah i had i, had, I have a detached garage mm -hmm. I, and i had gutter guards on it because between my, our tree and neighbor's trees, that, that one would always get filled up. Sure. Well, it, at last year, you know, the end cap wasn't quite covered with it. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a bird nest up, up there. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, and I noticed that, you know, you'd see the birds sitting up there, and then you just, the water, you know, in the rain, you just see it was just trickled out. Sure. It never overflowed. Mm-hmm. But you know, so I went up there, yep, there's the nest. So I had to pull it out. So you, you do need, even though you got gutter guards, you got to check them. Yeah. <laughs> is, it a, is it a difficult thing, Mike, to take off a gutter guard and put it back on? Can John Average Homeowner do it? John Average Homeowner can do that. It is, traditionally, they just clip into place. There are uh, various options at, you know, various okay. marketplaces. But, yeah, they're pretty easy to do. Uh, a word on uh, ladder safety um, if you're putting your ladder on the lawn, it's always a good idea. And what I do is I take uh, long screwdrivers. I've got a, a eight inch screwdriver and I put one under, behind each one of the legs of the ladder. Oh, so it can't slide so on the grass. So they can't slide out. Great idea. Yeah, because the last thing we want is, is that to happen. Okay. So, so if I'm J Joe homeowner and because we're picking on Joe Sheehan today, we don't know where he is. He's somewhere out in the mortgage mobile trying yeah. to keep America safe for mortgage rates. He's searching for the Wall Street. Either that or he's at coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if I'm not comfortable, you know, going up and taking my, my uh, gutter guards off and stuff, is there something else I can do to keep the ice from building up? 
know, you like know um, mobile homes have heat tape around their water lines. Is there? They do. You know, there's a couple answers to your question. One, if you're noticing that you're getting a lot of um, ice damming on your roof, or if your roof is the first one to have the ice melt off of your, uh, you know, the snow melt off your yep. roof, that's probably an indication that your insulation level is pretty low. Um, so that would be something to fortify. We're looking at between 12 and 14 inches of insulation, and that would help um, cut down on ice damming. The, th the second thing that you can do is you can use like a heat tape or heat cord uh, in a zigzag manner to melt away that ice buildup and get that to flow. You know, that uh, comes in handy in some valleys where you have like a... Uh, northeast valley that seems to always ice up that would be an option for you so you know wherever you find that that would be an, okay. an option so and that's a low enough voltage you're not worried about right yeah it is a 110 voltage but um, it is um, something you want to put on a GFCI um, outlet you yeah. know and protect that but yeah it's a very common um, application it, it comes with clips that clips onto your shingles and such okay. so, good but yeah. next subject we're um, going to get into before we do that i just want you to know folks in 1931 today president herbert hoover signed the bill that made the star spangled banner our official anthem ta-da ta-da hey yay. Okay. so 1931 okay yeah, so... Um, that was just to give Mike a chance to take a <laughs> breath and look at his notes, folks. Yeah. Along with the spring cleaning. Uh, <laughs> it's behind a, behind a scene radio <laughs> thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so on the outside, that's really what you're looking for, okay. chipping paint, um, any of that other stuff for maintenance items. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're uh, taking a look on the inside of the house. We're looking at, um, if you haven't cleaned out your refrigerator, pan on the bottom pull that out clean that out because that can get moldy we also want to make sure that um, we're taking that long vacuum cleaner attachment that no one knows what that's for yeah it's <laughs> right, you got a use for it that's what it's for it's oh. to clean out the the vacuum out the coils underneath yeah. your um, refrigerator and also if you notice that there's a lot of lint buildup around your dryer it's a good idea to disconnect the power first open up the back of that dryer and Clean out any lint because that can be a fire hazard and such. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're walking around your property, run the water for 10 minutes. Sinks, toilets, showers, all that other stuff. We want to make sure that there aren't any water leaks or anything that are developing. And then also uh, put your hands on the pipes underneath your sinks. If there's anything loose, we want to make sure that that's tightened and, and leaking. I want you to kind of keep an eye out for any uh, of that chrome piping, those P-traps. Yep, yep. Those have a tendency to leak, uh, rusting on the bottom, mm -hmm. and then that's just hassle. Um, also, take a uh, grab of your your toilet and gently rock it back and forth. If you're noticing that that's rocking back and forth, that may sacrifice the wax ring. And I have time and time again found extensive damage because of unknown water leaking from underneath the toilet. I want to be proactive in not only changing that wax ring, but also making sure that's secure with either um, shims or such. I'm not an advocate of fully caulking the toilet down. Because um, then you can't see if it's leaking. Correct, correct. Um, if you do have a toilet that is caulked down, cut down, cut out slots on the sides right next to the flange mm -hmm. or those little nut caps, making sure that that will be able to um, flow out if needed. So those are just a few things that can really have a long-term uh, difference on your property. And, um, you know, and then also we want to make sure that the uh, water heater and the um, refrigerator are monitored for if you have an older water heater. You can use uh, water detectors to monitor that. Mm -hmm. um, In case the water pump goes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Currently 28. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. Life is not a bed of roses, Mr. Bon Jovi says. 
But here on Dakota Housing Network, maybe it is. <laughs> it, it's. I think life's a better roses here. Yeah, I love it. Everything's All coming right. up roses. Okay. Dave Floor, Greg Larson with Mike Wilson from Ace Inspections Hi, today. Hi, Mike. How's it going? I, thanks for having me in. You bet. Mike, uh, we've been talking about things to look for, and, and spring is a good time to do that. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. I just thought of a question as I was talking here that that uh, we haven't asked you, but you talk about these things. Is there is there anywhere where you could post or someone could find a list of things they should look at in the spring? You know, like you're using your Facebook page now, and again, not a, not a promotion, but you are for people to look at to try to find some kind of damage that they might be seeing on their house to find out what it is. Would it be possible to post something up there of things they should look at? I'll actually put that together in the next couple of days. See there, folks, right here. There Just we go. go. Moving in shakers. <laughs> yeah, so we were talking about hoses. And then after we talk about hoses, we want to go outside the house and things they should look for, like tree branches and stuff, right? Correct. Okay. You know, uh, water damage, again, uh, just a continuation from our last discussion. Uh, the sinks and toilets, we want to make sure we're monitoring those. But also your your washing machine lines. Those rubber lines, they're only good for about two to three years, and then they should be replaced. And a lot of people don't. I do have a couple pictures yeah. on my Facebook page. I saw it. Of, Ugly. <laughs> of hoses that are starting to bulge. So you, you can see, it's, it's to check them, and if it's a bulge, because you had that picture that had the bulge on it. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks like. Yeah. And then that's on the verge of actually bursting. And I have, during my inspections, actually turned off the water and then left a note for the homeowner stating that that was an unsafe issue. Um, but also, uh, we want to make sure that we're getting water detectors, especially if you have an, uh, an older home, uh, 65 or older, that can have what's called clay tile sewer line that yep. connects your house from um, the sewer from your house to the street. If you have a lot of ho uh, trees out in the yard, or even if you, if you don't, you can get roots that are caught up in there, and that may cause a backup and that can be very damaging. So some people are on a six month uh, cleaning schedule with you know, one of the local you know, suppliers with you know, clean outs and stuff. And some are all the way up to two years and, and things. But if that's something you're really thinking about, get a water detector from any of the local hardware stores. Um, the one I speak of is uh, down by Watchdog. It, uh, it's a box, the bottom pulls out, and then there's a six-foot lead. There's a lot of opportunities to use that. One, just put that down by your drain in your basement. So if that does so, start to back okay. up, then at least you know. That lead can also be put in your sump well, and now that we're getting into spring, that's something to kind of keep an eye on. It should, If you have a pump in there, it should be placed just above where that pump normally kicks in. That way, if there is a failure then the water connects those leads and it goes off again. Mm -hmm. um, another option is on your fridges that have water service to it, pull that out, tape that lead down to the floor just underneath it, and then um, I'm also suggesting to put a piece of wood back there so it hits that piece of wood and doesn't pinch the water lines in the back, um, and then place that, that monitor somewhere so then if that back starts to leak, then at least you okay, know. so the wood is to keep the wheels from the fridge from going all the way so the refrigerator doesn't pinch the water line correct okay correct yeah right. I apologize yeah so um, those are just some tips that I tell my people and when doing my walk sensors through. cost a uh, 13 15 dollars yeah, okay. yeah they're so very reasonable and well worth the insurance yeah so yeah, yeah. and then moving around the outside of the property uh, we want to make sure that when we're back up on the roof <clears throat> to check there if there's any uh, branches that are rubbing against your shingles that can definitely be a damaging area just take a pruners with you and cut those back if needed if you do have um, tree branches that are rubbing against your power line you'll want to contact your local power company to have those cut back because that can be an issue of course so <clears throat> and then working your way around the property we want to make sure that we're making that the grading is moving away from the property, you know, normal mm -hmm. stuff. Downspouts can uh, definitely be detrimental if they're not being extended out. And then, interestingly enough, the hidden thing that a lot of people are, are not finding is the trim around their house where they've got the rock next to the, the lawn with the plastic edging and such or the brick or whatever. 
that has a tendency to dam water behind it. So we want to make sure that we're putting holes in the plastic, spreading out the brick or something so the water can move through, and then actually trenching out a little bit of the lawn so that water would be able to make it through. There are times when water collects next to your house, comes down along your foundation, comes underneath your floor, and if you're noticing heaving in your floor in your basement, that's a direct cause for that. So that's something that you want to prevent any additional Yes, you want to make sure you maintain the slope away from your house. Correct. And that can change, right? It can change. From winter to winter as frost pushes dirt around? It does. Okay. It does. So two years ago you might have had her licked and now you don't. That's true. Okay. That's true. Um, Of course, chipping paint, um, deck, you know, take a look underneath your deck. It's not just a place to put your toys underneath there. It's <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, take a look underneath there okay. and see if there's any dry rot that's starting to, to um, develop or anything like that. There are options of, of sistering joists or replacing joists. That so when you're pulling out your toys, just take a peek. Just take a peek. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Um, put your hands on it if you notice that there's any soft spots or uh, extended moisture on that wood that can uh, cause damage or, or just missing pieces. Mm-hmm. Want to make sure that you're being proactive and making sure that's good. Uh, grading around um, the feet or the supports of the deck is also incredibly important. I want to kind of keep an eye on that because if we have water pooling or moving through that area, then it can get that area soft at the bottom of your deck of that support and that can sink. And of course, that that can be a structural yep. issue. So, mm-hmm. want to make sure we're monitoring that. Okay, so folks, if you're listening, and we know at least mom's or Mike's mom is listening. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hey. <laughs> um, that uh, these are simple things you can look for. You know, just things you should do annually, spring and fall. Make sure things are looking good. Uh, one other thing I learned the hard way on a uh, on another house was. In the springtime, when we're talking about slope away from the house and stuff, make sure you walk around the house and make sure there's concrete foundation between the siding and the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it should be how many inches? Four inches. Four inches? Yeah. Because that will rot out the bottom of some siding just in a heartbeat. So, yeah, don't don't, uh, pile the dirt up trying to get that slope right up to the bottom (laughs) of your your siding. Yeah, don't pile it up against the the siding. Pile it, move it away from the house. Yeah. That's kind of what I was trying to say. Yeah, what what is the, you know, if you were going to, Reslope. Mm-hmm. What's the, you know, how how big are the drops should be per, you know, six feet or ten feet? It or something? should be a one inch per foot for six feet around your property okay. as best as you can. Yeah. So, so something close to that. Yeah. All right. Also, you know, kind of take a look inside your window wells. That's always a, a surprising high percentage of things that I find. I like to see four to six inches of true airspace between the top of the material and the bottom of the window frame. That mm-hmm. way you can monitor it if it does start to catch water, and you have room to actually bail it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd have to dig a hole for the water to collect and then bail out of that. Also a big advocate of, of window well covers. Okay. That prevents a lot of that stuff. And it also keeps water, snow from getting in there. Mm-hmm. So if it is an escape route, you would be able to get out with that. One of the things that I suggest with that is to use bungee cords with um, to keep that down. Um, put in eye hooks in the the window well itself and then attach that to the the cover and then use bungee cords to actually mm-hmm. attach it so it can be pulled out from the inside. No, yeah, no. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and paint around the outside. Um, that's always something you want to keep on, on top of. And then woodpeckers. We're starting to get into woodpecker season. Yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> so whenever you get into that plywood siding, especially in the like yeah. 70s, 80s yeah. properties, we want to make sure that um, if you notice that there's um, a row of holes in your plywood siding, that's just a, a manufacturer defect. There's a little spot there and a little bug is getting inside of that space. The woodpecker can f- can hear that. He will start going after that bug and create those holes. If that's the case, kill off the bug with a pesticide like a seven or such and then seal that up. Well, what do you seal it with? Woody. Just epoxy? Wood, you wood could putty. do like a wood putty or, or a paintable 
uh, sealant or whatever. Woody, Woody wouldn't do that, Woody? Woody, Woody wouldn't do that. Yeah. Woody's <laughs> cousins. Woody is Woody's cousins. Yeah, oh, Woody's so the rich. black sheep of the Woodpecker Woody's family. Woody's so rich, he buys his insects. He doesn't have to go to yeah, Well, he's, a, he's, he's got his own show. There and, you go. Yeah. <laughs> so we are headed to a break. So what was done today in 1875? What was the first? Um, 1875. Uh, I, I, I don't know. believe it was this long ago. Yeah, I don't know. The first indoor hockey game. Really? Yeah, in oh. Quebec, wow. Montreal. Okay. Another fun, absolutely useless fact. Back then, they didn't use a puck. They used a small ball about the size and the hardness of a baseball. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. And it was <laughs> dangerous. People yeah. People hurt, so they changed it to a wooden disc, mm-hmm. which is now turned into our hard, our rubber, hard puck. rubber puck. Yeah. Okay. But ice hockey started with a baseball. Oh. Can you imagine slinging that thing around? Yeah. There you All go. Right. Thank you, folks. We'll be back after the break. A bad name. Now 30 degrees. Here's Sean Hannity. Weekday afternoons on Super Talk 1270. And it's my life. Here it is with John Bon. What is what's his name? John Bon Jovi. I'll yeah. get it out. Some guy from Jersey. Just a little disconnect from my brain to my mouth. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. we're back. It's Trump trivia time. Okay. Trump trivia. How many bankruptcies has Donald Trump okay, actually I, I had? I know this question. Or been involved so in. How many is bankrupts? Well, that's why I'm asking you because right. I know you know. Yeah, it. I know. Yeah. He has never personally been no. bankrupt. Okay. He has. Filed Chapter 11 on four companies. Okay, and Chapter and 11 is a reorganization, reorganization of the debts that are owed, and it keeps the company running. That's correct. And pays off the yeah, creditors is, at a reduced amount. Yeah, he has never walked away. Personally. Personally, or as or a business. business. Yeah. Never just walked away from his bills. Interesting. It, However, he sold a few hotels off at a on a fire sale basis. Yeah, but and he absorbed the loss. Yep. So... Um, he, he, that you know, being said, I did not find any out any more information if okay. Warren Buffett had more bankruptcies yeah, than he did. I, I had read a thing that yeah. said that it was far fewer than Warren Buffett, but we can't verify that, so forget you heard it. From yeah, me. we didn't say anything about that. I didn't say a word. So, do you think? I, I mean, is it really that bad that he's that? that okay, he's had four of his companies that he had, was know. involved in. their it's public, like business as usual. I, I don't. I don't know if it's. World. Is it that big a deal? Know. I don't know. I mean, that's probably a lot for one person to be involved in four of them you know yeah if but, if, if you're if but, you're me and you have one business at a time yeah four business failures in 25 years is pretty significant but how many hotels and but, golf courses yeah, and other stuff that he owns i i don't know if it's okay so one more big, big blast of trump trivia do well, you know more? there is a tax called the trump tax oh my no i did not know that <laughs> Boy, that's something. When you get a tax, you get a named, tax after you. named after you, you're somebody. Uh, not that I'm going to strive for that <laughs> ever. Well, but what it is, is is there's a thing, folks, it's not. It's illegal constitutionally in North Dakota. can't happen. Uh, called a transfer tax. And many states have it, uh, 30-some states have it. And whenever you sell property, the state taxes either the seller or the buyer or both it's not a sales tax. It's a tax for the privilege of selling your house. You get to contribute. Area. Yeah, and it can get pretty high. In Philadelphia, city of Philadelphia's transfer tax is 6%. So mm. if you got a $100,000 house, you pay $6,000 to Philadelphia for your oh. transfer. You know, what I, you know what I think I should do? What's that? I should get a floor tax. Yeah. Every time there's some wood flooring, some flooring sold somewhere, yeah, I should, should, I get, I should get a floor tax for right. that. Oh. Well, to extend that, that's a transfer tax. That, that they're states, using my name. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I hadn't even thought of yeah, that. Yeah, they're using my name. That's why I want a floor tax. Yeah. Well, what Trump, what the Trump tax is, is there are developers, and Donald Trump is one of the guys who uses this. Uh, and then there's a lot, a ton of golf courses across the South, down in, you know, mm-hmm. where they can play golf all year round. What happens is I own a, a building, a condo. I, I put all these a condo up. Let's say it's a 50-unit condo. I build it. Mm -hmm. I sell all 50 units. Yep. All right. I sell one to Mike and one to you. Yeah. Okay. When you sell yours to somebody else, Mm -hmm. I get a a transfer fee. Well, isn't that sweet? And it's built right into the the covenants of the contract and all of that. So you could be the 10th buyer of that unit in that condo, and I get a transfer fee. I get a fee because you sold a condo in the building I built. It's a good gig if you can get it. That is the Trump tax. He's a smart guy. Yeah. 
I, well, you know, I know he does that. I don't know how far flung it is, how many times he's done it, or if he still does it or whatever, but because his last name is Trump, he gets blessed with a name on the tax. Yeah. And I'm, it's, I'm gonna, like I said, it's real common in golf associations. Could, it would, uh, would your wife sponsor a bill for a floor tax? For a floor tax? You know you'd have to talk to her. Okay, well, next time I see her, I'm going to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, we, let's get back to our go. guest here, yes, Mike. let's talk to something Mike Wilson from Mike. Ace Inspections. Okay, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some filters. and <clears throat> You know, it's, I think it's really important to make sure that we're monitoring our furnace filters. Uh, one inch filters should be changed every other month. Six inch filters and five, four, five, and six inch filters should be changed every six months. Um, the larger one should be changed when the when you change the time. That's a great uh -huh. reminder, of course, with your small spring head fall back. Yep. Um, put in filter. Yep. Yeah. Spring head fall back. Put in filter. That's easy to remember. Sure. Yeah. One of the things that when you choose a filter, um, the thicker the filter itself as far as the material that it's built out of um, can reduce that airflow that moves through it mm -hmm. and with that restriction you may find that your furnace during the heating cycle may shut off until it cools down and then continue to heat. When you turn up your thermostat it should heat during that whole time. Uh, what's happening is that, that um, either the furnace filter is too thick or it's needs to be changed because it's too clogged. Okay, so the furnace filters you go by, mm -hmm. the ones that are supposedly take out more of the allergens mm -hmm. in the air, they're going to be thicker. Right. So they're actually maybe not the best thing to get. They're a little harder on your furnace okay. because it does restrict that cooling air that's coming into your furnace. That's good info. Which, yeah, thanks. Oh. Um, because your furnace is designed to have uh, a specific amount of cooling from your house mm -hmm. to offset the heat sure. in your heat exchanger. If it gets too hot, there are limiters in the newer furnaces that will shut off the heating cycle until it continues. It cools down and then can okay. continue. And like you said, you spot that by your heater turning on an awful lot. Correct. Okay. Correct. Another symptom of that uh, uh, where the furnace will light and then chuff out. Yeah, some of these high efficiency filters have a cap on the end where it goes through your wall. And it's one single protrusion through your wall. The center is your exhaust. The back of that cap is another pipe where the combustion air comes into your furnace and feeds it. One of the difficulties with that is that cap can be misplaced, whether with wind or you know, kids or whatever. So then you get bird's combust. nest. Oh, mm -hmm. that could happen. Uh, the you get the exhaust air combining with the combustion air, and your furnace will chuff out. It'll it'll light and then burn itself out. Mm. So that is a symptom of that. If you have yeah. that set up, just make sure that that's fully installed. So I've got you know, my furnace filters the one inch. One inch, yeah. So you're saying I should replace that monthly? Every other month. Every other month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you're still costing me more money. Yeah, because <laughs> I was doing it every three months. My my feeling is that the cleaner you keep your furnace yeah. filter, the longer your furnace is going to last. Uh, and, and I'm going to guess the safer long. the furnace is. But, That's correct. Yeah, but it says yeah. on the thing, replace every three months, Mike. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, no, I'm just right. And funny. that and and I'm not a fan of yeah. the filters that are meshy, where you can actually see people through that filter okay that's keeping the cats and dogs out but that's about it okay you know so i do suggest yeah. and as far as your as your heating and cooling systems i want to make sure that the um the cooling fins on your air comp conditioner compressor outside are clean you know if you look at that and there's cotton from the last season mm -hmm. and, and build up on that um, take steps to clean that out whether it's the high pressure water uh, sh cleaning that out or they do make special combs that can pick up a lot of that dirt mm -hmm. you will save energy on your filter or on your uh, cooling system by doing that okay mike if i'm going to take water to clean it out mm -hmm. um, do i just walk up to the thing from the outside and hit it with this water to clean it out well or? best you'll want to turn off the breaker in the breaker box when you're oh, when help. you're doing that stuff no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then you shoot the water from the inside out to push that um dirt off the fins and so you don't plug the fin right correct see there mm -hmm. folks correct. that's that's my problem right there 
Why? I've been doing it inside out. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I really want to draw your attention to is if you do have a humidifier in the house, to make sure that you turn it off in the summer because the air conditioner will dry out the air. That may activate the, the humidifier and start pumping water into okay. your system. And it can air, uh, freeze up your A-coil. I can deal with that I because I can confirm that because that actually we'd see that if I forget to turn or we have one yeah. on our furnace if mm-hmm. I forget to turn it off that will drain yeah. a lot in the summer so I oh okay yeah. I okay we that. have just a couple of minutes left Mike thanks so much for being here we really appreciate it and all the information again folks ACE inspections on Facebook um, if you want some help with diagnosing some issues you might be experiencing with your house. And what's the last word you want to leave us with? My website is aceinspectionsnd.com. Uh, please feel free to visit that. And always, you know, when you're looking at buying a house, definitely contact a realtor. I've seen so much. This is why I love the guy. Yeah. Well, I, just from my experience. And try I've North Dakota Housing Finance. You would, yeah. Yeah. You know, but it, it seems to yeah. go much easier yeah. Yeah. Uh, that oh, way versus cool. no, for no question. And uh, ACE inspections say biz, put, and when you search for it, do Bismarck because, like you said, there's ACE inspections in Australia, Sydney, Australia. and one in, there's one in Florida that I found right. when I was searching. So. Which Mike's trying to figure out how to make that a branch office. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be All wonderful. Right. All right. Thank well, you thanks, very Mike. Much for having me. Okay, thanks so much for listening, folks. Thank you, Mike. And we'll. Next, next week, it's supposed to be Joe and you. Me and Joe? Yeah, Joe back. He's back from the mobile. Really? We'll see. Well, okay. the mythical Joe may become real. Yep. Okay. Kind of like Thor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, he kind of looks like Thor. <laughs> yeah. he's, you know, he's bulked up. Okay. All Thanks right. for listening, folks.